questions throughout. You can write comments or questions in the chat room um, and we can come back to them. So should we get started, Brittany? Sure. Sure. Okay, so let me, my name is Sally Lipsky. If you've never met me from Plant Based Pittsburgh and we have our star here, Brittany Giroudi. And if you have never seen a cooking demo from Brittany, you are in for a treat. So sit back, enjoy. I will say that tomorrow I will, you, everybody here will get an email from me with the recipes and any other information that comes up, as well as a link to our YouTube with Brittany's presentation. So without any further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Brittany. All right, let me just pin myself so I show up on the screen. All right, there I am. All right, well, welcome guys to tonight. Um, tonight we are focusing on cancer prevention by what we eat. And so we're gonna go over some, some recipes that are really, really good for helping us prevent um, getting cancer in the first place or helping our immune system um, as well. So I'm gonna kind of talk about a couple of the ingredients and we're gonna do a soup and a salad tonight, starting with a salad first. And I love these two recipes because of course they're easy and they taste good and you can customize them to whatever you have at home, which you guys know if you've watched my channel or taken a cooking class with me, I'm all about. So this first salad, I kind of call my harvest salad. This is one I really like to do during the fall months and even the winter months because we're gonna use a couple um, cruciferous vegetables that are very common in this time of year, like Brussels sprouts. But we're gonna do it in a way that you might have not had it before. I taught a cooking class um, last month and we made the salad and it's been something that I've been eating super often lately. And it's just a beautiful blend of things that you might not have thought to throw into a salad. So the first, um, and we'll have all the recipes too, to send out to you guys along with this recording. So you don't have to write anything down. You can just relax and watch. And as always, you can kind of tweak any of these recipes to whatever you have on hand. Um, starting with our salad, I really like putting kale in our salad. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't like kale, I suggest looking for baby kale at your grocery store. Baby kale is very similar to spinach um, where it doesn't have a really hard exterior, it's really easy to cut up, it's really versatile. So if you are somebody who does not like kale, there are so many different kinds of kale first to try. Uh, I have some, some curly kale here, but you can definitely do baby kale if you'd like. And this is super easy. You can, can change this out for a different green if you don't wanna use kale, but I love kale because it's a cruciferous vegetable. And we know that cruciferous vegetables are super important for helping us prevent, prevent cancer. Um, so just to show you guys real quick what I do is I actually strip our kale. And if you go to, if you're from Pittsburgh, some of us are, um, the East End Food Co-op has kale that's very affordable uh, at the co-op. And I just will go to the vegetable section and buy it. I don't even have to buy it in plastic or anything, but it's super easy to prepare. And all I do is I just strip it. So you hold on to the end part and you just kind of pull. And then it leaves you the rib part that you can um, compost or do whatever you'd like with, but it leaves you the salad part. So in our, in our salad tonight, which will be my lunch tomorrow, um, I just really just break this up with my hands. You can chop this with a knife. Uh, this is one that I have for lunch a lot, especially during this time of year. And usually I'll just grab, I would say two to three of these guys. Uh, sometimes I get red kale as well for this, but. And I just pull and it kind of leaves me my, the part I want in our salad. Now you can of course massage your kale and that makes it a little bit softer to eat. But I find that with this recipe, um, just ripping it really does the job. And then since this is gonna be lunch tomorrow, um, I'm gonna kind of tell you guys how to prep it in case you guys want to do this ahead of time. There are really simple tricks to kind of make sure that your salad doesn't get soggy or anything like that. The second cruciferous vegetable that we're going to put in tonight is Brussels sprouts. And it's Brussels sprouts are in season, and I love using them in a variety of ways, but I actually like eating my Brussels sprouts raw. 
which you might not have thought about. Of course, you can roast them in the oven and make them beautiful, but I actually like to shred them in my food processor. Super easy, and we're gonna kind of do a similar thing to the carrots. So, you know, I just get it out and, and this is really simple. So with my food processor, they, most of them come with like little blade attachments. And I'm just gonna use this one up here. It's very, very easy and simple. And I literally just cut off the little ends of my Brussels sprouts and then I'm just gonna put them in and shred them. And this just helps me, I feel like it helps eat them. It really blends in with everything really well. So if you're somebody who maybe didn't like the taste of Brussels sprouts, it's literally like baby cabbage. Uh, and this is just a great alternative to eat them. And again, it's a cruciferous vegetable. So really you're getting the cruciferous vegetable from the kale as well as the Brussels sprouts. So I just do this. It's gonna be loud for a second. But... I'm gonna of course chop them as well. You don't have to have a food processor for this, but this just makes my life a lot easier as long as they're not tossing them on the floor. Um, but like I said, they're just baby cabbages. And I'm gonna do the same with my carrots as well that are coming up. All right, all of those are in there. It doesn't take long at all. And I just keep it in a bowl, especially because this is gonna be something I eat, eat tomorrow. Um, I just put all of my greens already chopped and you can see that they, they shred up so nice. And just dump that all in. And for the salad, I actually eat the entire salad um, myself. I, it's really a two person salad. And then the dressing is, a, is for one person. I usually make the dressing right before I'm gonna eat it. Um, but I love this salad so much that I just, like this huge bowl, I just, I just crave it. And that's something that um, being plant-based is something I never thought in a million years would happen. Me like craving a salad like that. And it's just so packed full of flavor that I really, I really do crave it. All right, so I'm just gonna shred our carrots now. And this is another simple way. I just cut off the, the tops and the ends, really simple. And it's exactly the same. I can get this open now. You can just use your food processor that you just used for your um, for your Brussels sprouts, but just go ahead and put it in. You can use different color carrots. And, you know, I measure out, but generally I'll just use whatever I have on hand. So these are kind of like guidelines. I always feel like recipes are guidelines. It should be whatever you enjoy. If you don't like carrots, you can of course leave them out. And then I just have them all shredded. You can even buy shredded carrots. If you don't, if you don't want to shred them yourself, but super easy. And also when I, when I make foods that I think about for cancer prevention, um, I think about making them as colorful as possible. So I really love this, this green and orange variety. And then you can play around with adding tomatoes or so many different ideas as well. All right. So once I have all of our vegetables shredded, I can kind of build our salad from this. This is really all of our bulk of our recipe. And what I like about this one is that we can play around with so many different ideas. I, I definitely look at this as a meal. So as I build this, I think about, well, do I have a whole grain? So lots of times I will have some kind of cooked grain that maybe I've bulked, cooked up, you know, ahead of time. And that it's cool. You don't want to add a hot grain to this, but I have some quinoa or some, you know, you can add farro to this, really whatever grain you like. So we had some of this for dinner that I let cool, and then I could add that as well. You can of course leave it out if you want. And then the other items too that you can change up is the beans. So because we're doing cancer prevention here, um, I wanna talk about edamame. And adding edamame is a great way of adding in another thing that's cancer prevention. So you have the cruciferous vegetable as well as the soybean. And this is actually the whole soybean. So this is gonna be even healthier for you than if you added tofu or tempeh. You could of course add those, but even keeping it more whole, 
more whole and less processed, you could add some shelled edamame and that would be a great source of protein and really filling as well. So I do that sometimes and I just get this from Whole Foods. It's organic and really, really inexpensive. Um, I know that lots of other places have edamame as well. And again, I just get it frozen and it's just great to pull out of the fridge. And then I also think about, um, so I have my bean, I have my whole grain, and I think about the fruit aspect in it, which really does add a lot of flavor to it as well. So because we're in fall, I switch it up between apples and pears. Um, whatever vegetable or fruit I have in there is what I use. So, you know, chop up an apple. Now, since I'm making this for tomorrow for lunch, I'm not gonna chop my apple now because I don't want it to brown, but um, I will wrap this and then just chop up an apple right before I'm gonna have it. Super simple and easy. Another thing too you can add is nuts and seeds, or you can add some dried fruit. So, you know, a little bit of dried um, cherries is really great in this, a little bit of dried um, raisins, you can kind of play around. So this, this salad really never gets boring or old or you get tired of it. So this is the base of it, but now we're gonna do our salad dressing. And I wanted to kind of show you guys that, you know, making your salad dressing is really, really simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And this one is really lovely because it has a lot of sweetness to it. And there's just a nice balance. It's something that I find really does well with all these ingredients of cruciferous vegetables. And that's a salad dressing of, of only four ingredients, which is generally, I kind of go, I have, this is my sweet one. And then I have a savory one in it with hummus most times. I really only stick with the two salad dressings in my life, um, just because I find it, it easier for me to bounce back and, and they're so good. So for this one, I really like using applesauce, date paste, Dijon mustard, and some kind of white balsamic. Now you can use a dark balsamic, it doesn't really matter. It'll just kind of make the, the dressing a little bit darker, um, totally optional for you. So I just get unsweetened applesauce. You can make your own or buy it. And it's just two tablespoons and this makes for one serving. I'll make this the night before, refrigerate it and then pour it over my salad when I'm ready to eat it. Uh, and again, it's just a really nice light dressing. So I have a little bit of applesauce, if you guys have followed me for any amount of time, you guys know that I always have date paste somewhere in my fridge made up. So it makes life super simple and easy. So I have some date paste that I'll add. And also I love um, all different types of mustard, but Dijon mustard goes really nice with this. And then I also have a white balsamic. And again, you can use any balsamic that you want. You can even play around with flavored balsamics, but I find with the apple and the date paste, it really is sweet enough. So you just, you know, you just have to make it to your taste buds. A lot of people will ask me about sweetness and really you can tweak any of this to make it what you like. I have a little bit of white balsamic that I'll add. And it mixes so well together that it'll be ready to go to dress, um, dress when I'm ready. And so I'm getting in all different colors I'm getting in. You could add some uh, chopped red bell pepper, like I said, tomatoes, really variety of the color of the rainbow. You're getting an edamame. You're making a delicious uh, salad dressing that you really will start to crave, which is fantastic. And then you can just dress when you're ready to go and you have yourself a complete meal. Like I said, change up the greens. Uh, you, can, you can change up the beans as well and change up the vegetables. I'll show you guys what it looks like up close. And so it's just a like light brown, but it looks really, really beautiful when it goes over the greens. And it's just, it's literally, like I said, I start to crave it. It's so delicious. So that's the salad. I, again, love that I'm getting in so much Christmas versus vegetables. You get bonus points if you put turmeric and black pepper in your salad dressings, right? Uh, for extra cancer fighting properties. But um, this is just such a great way to start your day or, or midday to really get in all those things. So does anyone have any questions about the salad first before we move over to the soup? Okay. Yes, soybean, soybeans are so healthy for you. And I'll give a little plug to one of my favorite books. 
is by Christy Funk and she's working with PCRM about breast cancer and she's a breast surgeon. She has a book called The Breast, The Owner's Manual, which talks about how important and how healthy soy is. Soy is really a lot of times um, villainized. And I can tell you right now that um, as somebody who is really uh, serious about preventing breast cancer at all costs, as I am, uh, I eat soy very frequently to help lower my risk of breast cancer. So I suggest everyone check out this book. It's on Amazon. Um, audio, uh, Audible has it as well as an audio book. It's really fantastic. So this is really up there with one of the ones that I suggest everyone uh, read. And you guys will get all of the recipes with the recording. I see a couple people in the chat. Um, so we're going to move over to the to the soup version. And this is for all my people who hate mushrooms, uh, like I do. I'm somebody who that's one of the foods in the plant-based uh, world that I personally have never been a fan of, something I always avoided and picked out of foods, but I know how good they are for preventing cancer. And um, it's just, the soup is actually a mushroom soup of all things, but you can't really taste the mushrooms. It's really a beautiful hidden version of it that really lets you get in. Seriously, there's 16 ounces of mushrooms in the whole recipe. And as somebody who is not a fan, uh, and as a, lots of people have told me on my channel who have tried this out with family members who do not like mushrooms, uh, this is such a good creamy soup uh, that lets you get that in. So I'm all about sneaking in things when I can, right? Uh, little things like, like you could add broccoli sprouts to that salad to even boost more anti-cancerous uh, properties. You could put chopped broccoli. There's so many different ways to kind of sneak in the foods that are so good for us and so good for preventing breast cancer. All right, so give me one second to change out my situation. I'm gonna move to my induction top. For the soup part of it. All right. And if you guys um, are interested in the soup, I'm going to do a couple swaps that I have that is different from our YouTube channel. Um, our YouTube channel has the soup on there as well as on my website. It has everything already up, but I'm going to tell you a couple swaps to even make it more anti-cancerous that I've been doing lately that I really, really enjoy. All right. So let me get my pot out. And I have everything kind of pre-chopped and ready to go for us, which is great. Okay, all right, so anytime I grocery shop too, I kind of think about um, like, what are the healthiest things that I can buy even in the terms of what onion do I pick? And for me, you know, all onions are fantastic, but a red onion is even better. It's like, kind of the king of the onions, right? It's so much color, there's, there's, it's super powerful in its nutrients and, and kind of antioxidants. So the only onion you will find in any of our recipes and in my house is a red onion. Anytime I make onion rings or anything, I just, I always go for the ones that are, are vibrant in color. So you could use whatever onion you like, extra bonus points if you use a red onion. I can't really, I don't know, it's not that huge of a difference in taste for me, so why not sneak it in, I feel. So I have a red onion here that I chopped. I also have some garlic that I chopped up as well. Super awesome to start your recipes, kind of sauteing your, your onions and garlic with that. And we're gonna use um, a vegetable stock. Now, when I don't make my own vegetable stock, I buy the Pacific Foods Organic Low Sodium Vegetable Stock or the engine two vegetable stock, but that's sometimes hard to find now. Um, these are really awesome alternatives to making it yourself, but making it yourself is very easy and cost-effective. So uh, we're gonna need four cups of it total. And I just always start off and just use a little bit of it to kind of saute my vegetables. You know, you can also use water to saute, but I add, find that it adds a little bit extra flavor if you do it in vegetable stock. So I'm just gonna turn on my pan. You guys will see the soup is literally so simple and easy. And I'll tell you how to make it kind of more of a complete meal if you don't wanna have it just as like a side. And, and it's so awesome because you're literally getting in so many mushrooms without the mushroom taste, which, you know, that's, that's what I'm about. 
So go ahead and add your onions and garlic. And we're just gonna saute them until they are translucent or see-through. Um, that's really the sweet spot for this. You can also make this in an Instant Pot. So if you're somebody who has an Instant Pot or loves an Instant Pot, you can kind of skip all the steps and throw everything in and, and set it. Uh, so that's another really awesome, quick, convenient option. You know, I am always in the kitchen cooking constantly. Literally there is like, I would say like one new recipe coming through my house almost daily. So I'm always trying to like think of new ideas and I, and I need stuff that's simple. So having different items like this and the salad and, and some of our other recipes that are quick and easy really let me do so much. So uh, this is just, this is kind of a staple. And the soup actually came um, to existent because I'm from a Slovenian background. My grandma is from uh, the Czech Republic and over, you know, her culture in growing up, our tradition was to have a sour soup, uh, mushroom soup every Christmas Eve. And so hers had a uh, kabalsi in it. It had, um, I think there's like a ham bone that she makes to make her soup and, and lots of other things, but there's lots of dried mushrooms and sauerkraut. So when we became plant-based, I needed to figure out a mushroom soup that I actually enjoyed that we could take over for Christmas Eve and, and we would have our soup and my other family members would have hers. And so this is kind of also my Christmas Eve soup. So I really love, we enjoy the soup all year round, but it has that extra kind of tie for me. Um, really my favorite way to eat mushrooms. All right, so let everything come up to heat. And uh, like I said, it's 16 ounces of mushrooms. You can use any mushrooms. I really like baby Bella mushrooms. Those are kind of my favorite for this recipe, but you could use any that you'd like. I've already done all of the chopping. So you can see it's quite a lot of mushrooms. It's two containers. Uh, two eight ounce containers if you go to the store. And I really, really, really love this because it just makes everything nice and thick and delicious and creamy. And it's almost like um, people have also used this for like cream of mushroom as a replacement for other recipes. So really it's endless with the possibilities. Yeah, so simple. And I know a lot of people also have tried this recipe and really liked it. So it's a, it's a good one for sure. So while they saute, um, you could be chopping your mushrooms to get all ready. That's pretty much the hardest part of this. The other ingredients that we're gonna do today is I have some nutritional yeast that you can leave out or, or add in. I, in my original recipe, call for a cup, which is kind of a lot, although this soup makes a lot of volume. Um, but I find that you can even cut it back to one fourth of a cup. So uh, I'll have that on the, I'll have that in the show notes of, uh, the video and of the recipe as well. If you're somebody who doesn't want to use as much, you can kind of tone that down. And then two is that we end up making kind of a cream sauce at the end. Um, this does freeze really well, Laura. So yep, freeze away, it, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and so my trick for making kind of a cream sauce replacement is that usually I do two cups of a non-dairy milk mixed with half a cup of cashews. And um, you also can replace the half a cup of cashews with a white bean to make it nice and creamy, either one. Um, but for this recipe, I find that to make it even more cancer fighting or can anti-cancerous, we're gonna use soy milk in replacement of the cashews mixed in. So I just use two cups of an unsweetened, um, unflavored soy milk and it's creamy enough that it's perfect. And then we're getting in some extra soy, right? So that's a good way of sneaking in as well. But anytime any of your recipes call for, if it calls for like a coconut milk, if you're making like a, a curry or anything like that, you can always do the trick of, of mixing up some cashews with a non-dairy milk and kind of putting that in replacement for coconut milk. That's a trick I do a lot whenever it calls for like a full fat coconut milk in a recipe. All right, so these are starting to heat up. How many of you guys in the chat are mushroom lovers? And how, I want to know how many people don't like mushrooms. I feel like you're either all in or all out. Well, people are big fans. All right, if you guys are not a fan of mushrooms, you have to promise me that you'll try this recipe. It's, it's something that you actually will enjoy, I promise. It'll have like, you know, 
the stamp of approval from somebody who, who's not a fan. And I've tried. I've tried with lots of recipes like mushrooms. It's, it's something I still struggle with. Mushrooms and, and beets, I kind of, those are my two things that I'm trying to avoid, to enjoy, that not trying to avoid, but um, are so good for you that I, that I try to get them into my, into my mouth every once in a while. All right, once they are see-through, what you can do now is you can add your vegetable stock. So this is so easy, it's four cups. I just dump it in, right? It's super easy. It's, this whole container is actually four cups, so that's even easier. Tanya, this is like, um, the hardest part of this recipe is chopping the mushrooms, which is easy. All right, so then we're gonna add the mushrooms, right? So simple. Okay, add them in, and then you can go ahead and give that a toss. There's a lot of mushrooms to liquid right now. Make sure they're kind of all coated with the vegetable broth. And I also add a little bit of oat flour to this recipe. I find that that helps thicken up stuff as well. Um, so I add three tablespoons of an oat flour which you can just take rolled oats and pulse them in your blender. You don't have to buy oat flour. If you want to, you know, make it even easier, you can buy oat flour, but um, it's super easy just to blend it in your blender and make it yourself. And again, that's three tablespoons. And then I add our nutritional yeast. And I just let everything kind of cook until you can tell that the mushrooms are starting to cook as well. You can saute them as well if you'd like. Um, just for to make it, the mushrooms even easier, you can just add it in and cook it. It's kind of optional. In our original recipe, I saute them, but um, for tonight's sake and for whenever stuff like gets kind of crazy and you just kind of don't want to watch it saute anymore, you can just add them in. It really doesn't play around too much with the flavor, I find. So then you just want a little bit of our oat flour. You'll see that that kind of changes the color just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna add in our nutritional yeast. And like I said, you can kind of um, scale back the original recipe. I had a cup, which is good, but you can do one fourth of a cup. I hope I'm hitting everyone's questions. My computer is a little bit further away. Like I said, this is gonna be my um, dinner, part of my dinner probably for the next couple of days. And it really gets a beautiful brown color once you add the nutritional yeast in the flour. And then you'll also see that the mushrooms kind of shrink down. So when you originally, when you put in the mushrooms, um, it really will seem like a lot to liquid, but then as they cook, they shrink down. So don't fear if you put them in and it seems like it's an awful lot. All right, and then you're just gonna let everything cook. Um, I do add one more seasoning and I call this Thanksgiving in a jar but it's Herbes de Provence. Uh, and I just like to use this. It's a blend of thyme, margarine, um, savory, rosemary, basil, sage, and lavender. And I get ours from Trader Joe's. They definitely have it. It is such an amazing blend. If you guys haven't tried it, again, it's like Thanksgiving in a jar. Um, it's literally all those flavors. And we add this to anything Thanksgiving. So if you know, you're making stuffing or you're making um, like a lentil loaf for Thanksgiving, this is fantastic. So I do like adding in uh, a little bit of this for this for the spices. And you can find it at any grocery store. It doesn't have to be Trader Joe's. And you can even make your own. If you Google it, there are lots of recipes that will let you kind of make this the spice blend itself. But this is such a like hidden gem. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about as much, um, or at least I haven't seen and a lot of plant-based dishes that is very underrated, but it is super flavorful. Another thing too, is that if you stop this right now and you let it cool and you add it to a blender and blended it till it was all smooth, this also would make a fantastic gravy. So like this recipe really just keeps on giving. Uh, there are so many different ways to tweak it to whatever you'd like. So if you're looking for a really easy and simple gravy for Thanksgiving, 
you could try this as well. I just wouldn't add the cream part. You just stop it at this point once they cook, let it cool and then blend it. But I definitely like this soup. So I'm just gonna let everything kind of, it's already starting to shrink a little bit. Let's, we're gonna let it go for a little bit longer. Super simple and easy. And then like I said at the end, we're just gonna add our soy milk. And I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice just to kind of brighten up the dish a little bit. And that's it. So just like really, really, really simple ingredients that you guys have. This would make a fantastic starter for Thanksgiving, right? You could put that as your, on your table as well, like kind of mushroom soup, or you can make it a gravy. And it's so great because again, it has all of that mushrooms that you're getting that are cancer prevention and also the soy milk if you decide to do that as well. Um, other things you could do here too, is you can play with the seasoning. So, you know, for cancer prevention, we talk a lot about turmeric and, and black pepper combined together. You could do any, really any of the spices are really going to help you as well, right? As mentioned, I always think about dishes of how can I boost the antioxidants in the dish? How can I make it even healthier? And there's so many different ways of kind of tweaking this as well, right? Like I said, there's bonus points if any of you guys are drinking green tea while you make it, right? Because green tea is so good for fighting cancer. So I'm going to take a sip of my green tea that I have sitting here as well tonight. Yeah, mach or matcha. Ooh, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit too late for matcha here since we're, I think it's close to 8:40. So, does anyone have any questions while this is cooking up? And again, adding in, you know, I always think about. You can think about um, Dr. Furman's G bombs are really an awesome way to think about ways to adding in things like like onions, red onions. Um, to your dish, adding in mushrooms, adding in beans, um, really awesome ways to kind of bulk up any meal. And I always think about, you know, how colorful something is. Those are really simple ideas. Um, let me see. You could blend, if you wanted to make this a gravy after the mushrooms are cooked all the way, uh, stop it here. Don't add the soy milk to it. You don't want to make it, this is going to thin it out a little bit. Um, you could you could blend it after it cools. This would be my recommendation uh, for doing that. And you can also do this in a slow cooker, right? Tons of different options. But this recipe really comes together really quick. I I did wash the mushrooms before I cooked them. Um, for coconut milk, I got asked about the ratio for cashews. I find that two cups. You could do, um, I would say a, a two cups to a half a cup of cashews is kind of what I do for a sub for coconut milk. It kind of depends on the recipe though. If you guys have a certain recipe you want me to look at, I can give you my opinion on it. Yeah, so anytime there is um, coconut because it's such saturated fat, I generally will just do this little kind of tweak and really it's creamy and delicious in a great way as well to kind of get that in. So that's kind of my take. I don't really, um, I've never really was a fan of coconut in general. So uh, it's just something I've, I've never really used cooking. And white beans as well. So if you wanted to make it even more low fat, if you weren't avoiding nuts, um, you can swap white beans equally for the, for the cashews. Um, other brands besides Eden soy milk that I found are Trader, jo Trader Joe's also has a soy milk that is organic and only has two ingredients. So there's, and that one is a lot cheaper. So either or would be my recommendation. Yeah, there you go. Someone just said it's, it's I'm not sure. I may have some in my cupboard. Um, it's herbs de Pro Provence. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Um, but it's just a spice blend. Again, it has thyme, rosemary, basil, sage, lavender in this one. Um, you can find this at any grocery store. It's just a spice blend. We get ours at Trader Joe's. It comes with a really nice little spoon on the side. Uh, savory, sal savory salad recipe that I do that's not the one we made tonight is I'll just do, um, I would say two tablespoons of any kind of hummus mixed within um, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard 
or your mustard of choice. And then I add some balsamic uh, vinaigrette to that. And you can add any kind of, uh, any kind of balsamic that you like for that one. We have, I really have been enjoying the teriyaki from California balsamic with that, if I'm making more of like a savory, but hummus is a great vehicle for dressings. We haven't, we are, we go through so much hummus in this household. It's kind of shocking uh, the amount, but it's, uh, it's a great, great savory idea. But you guys look at all the recipes with tonight's, tonight's as well. I'll add the savory on tonight and to the recipe package uh, when I do it. So I'm gonna let this go for a little bit longer. You'll start seeing that there should be more liquid and less uh, size of mushrooms. It really does cook down quite a lot. And uh, you can play around with the types of mushrooms. Like I said, Baby Bella are my favorite for this one. And don't be afraid with the 16 ounces of mushrooms. It really is uh, not, uh, doesn't, we do not like mushrooms at all in this household. My husband is also not a fan and he loves this recipe. So I'll give it a try. The teriyaki balsamic was from California balsamic. And they have all sorts. They also have like a garlic one. They have a seven Italian herb one, which is fantastic, but lots of different, there's so many different balsamic uh, stores to buy them at now that really you can get them. And I could pull out all of my balsamics that I have. I think it's, you just start collecting all of them. All right, I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit so we go a little bit faster. Um, another great way of making this a complete meal is to serve it over some kind of whole grain. So again, I kind of think about, you know, all my vegetables, then I kind of build it. I think I've, I, a lot of people ask me what plan that I did when I was, when I was starting. And really I followed Dr. Greger's kind of daily dozen. So I originally, I got the app and I did all of my check boxes on the free app to make sure I'm getting a variety of foods. But now, since I've been doing it for so long, like my brain just like thinks about that when I make a meal. So I'll think like, oh, I got my vegetables. And, you know, if I added white beans to the sauce, you know, oh, I've got my beans in there, but you know, I don't have a whole grain, right? There isn't really a whole grain with this dish. So I will make some kind of um, quinoa or rice or farro or millet, some kind of whole grain that I actually will serve the soup over. And that's a really fantastic way of making it more of a complete meal. And you can also add in, you know, if you wanted to add in white beans to this, it would be good as well. Um, Denise, it, it really depends on, I tell everyone that, um, like when you watch what I eat in a day videos, and this is one of the reasons why I don't like making those videos is because everyone's different on what they need, um, height wise and everything else. And so I am somebody who likes a well-balanced whole food plant-based uh, lifestyle where you can have some nuts and seeds. I think that's important to get in, you know, a serving of those a day. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pro Gregor's Daily Dozen that talks about getting in um, getting in a serving. That's my take on it. Uh, I did meet Dr. Greger in Ohio around two years ago. I got to hear him speak and I'm hoping to hear, hoping to go to future uh, events with him in the future. Um, if you're also, you can, I also think about nuts too, is that, um, if you guys have known my backstory or heard a little bit on the podcast today is that inflammation was a big thing I was, a, I was trying to get down. So I also will always think about like, okay, can I put, can I have walnuts instead of cashews? Because, you know, they're, they're the healthiest nut out there. So a lot of the times if I'll be eating, I'll eat walnuts um, as my nut of choice. So you can play around, but I always have flax meal every day. Um, chia seeds are great as well, or hemp hearts, you know, all of those things are important as well to get in. Yeah, my fitness pal is great to kind of see if you're getting in everything. The same with um, Chronometer, they're free websites that you can list in, kind of just to see an idea of like if you're getting in uh, all of your different vitamins and nutrients. I think that's a good, good check in to do every once in a while, especially if you're in a rut, maybe you're having the same things every day. It's really nice too to split it up. I also 
when I make meals for us, I will all think about like, oh, well, do we have quinoa like three days in a row? Maybe I should change it up to some other kind of grain. So I'm always trying to add variety. I think that's important when you're doing whole food plant-based. Um, Elm Elmhurst also is a good, good brand. They also have very limited ingredients. All right, so it's starting to bubble up. You kind of want to let it reach to a boil. Um, that's kind of the stage when you, when you know it's done. I'd like this to cook a little bit longer. See if we can encourage it to go a little bit faster before I add in the final touches. Yeah, Sally just put some good information about um, Dr. Greger. And I also believe he will be at the National Health Association Conference in Ohio uh, this summer. I believe so. So hopefully I'll get to get to see him talk a few times. I feel like I should be like, I'm like his biggest fan. I just got a walking treadmill. So people are like laughing around that I'm going to do these for my walking treadmill. I should, I mean, that would be pretty hard to cook and walk on our treadmill. I feel like that's a little bit, um, but I do work and walk from a walking treadmill. And then I don't, they don't sell this anymore, but um, like this is on my fridge and you guys probably can't see it there, but it says, what would Dr. Grigger eat? So like as a reminder on our refrigerator, right? So you guys just know I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of his and all of the work they've done. Yes, yeah, so um, I the book I referenced today was um, the breast man. Where did I put it now? Um, breast the owner's manual. This is um, a good one that every female should own. I feel like I feel like you should get this for every female in, that you know. It's by Dr. Christy Funk. She's a surgeon, a breast surgeon, who um, actually by doing this book changed her opinion on lifestyle. So she actually was writing this book and then came across the science that she was researching and had to change her lifestyle because of what the science said. So she's really awesome. If you guys have never heard from her, um, definitely check her out. I am a huge fan. She has lots of um, stuff with PCRM right now. She's been on their YouTube channel a whole bunch. And this book is really has so much great information about cancer prevention, um, which I'm so passionate about. So check this out. The How Not to Die book is great, of course, about lots of different um, lifestyle diseases that we you know, might encounter, but specifically for breast cancer, I definitely suggest that one. All right. Once your uh, mushrooms have shrunk down, you should have lots more liquid. I wish you guys, I wish I had my overhead camera so you guys could see. You can kind of shut the shut the heat off. It's still going to be warm. And what I do is I just pour our soy milk into it. Super simple and easy. This will just add another level of creaminess. It gives you that nice ratio of mushrooms to liquid that you're looking in a soup. Uh, so I really like this amount. And then also what I like to do is I like to just do a little splash. You could do this in your blender, mix it in, but I like to add a little splash of lemon juice. I find that it just brightens up and really um, takes the dish to another level. And, you know, once you make this recipe a whole bunch, you won't even need to look at the recipe because it's so simple, but just give it one more, one more scoop mixture. And then you are set to go and you have this delicious creamy soup that you wouldn't even think has mushrooms in it. You don't really taste it but you're getting in all the great health properties that mushrooms give you uh, that I really enjoy. So I hope that was super simple and easy. You can again, pour it over your favorite whole grain. And if you guys wanna see me do it again, we'll have this on our YouTube channel as well as it's on my, my, my YouTube channel. Um, I make it slightly different without the soy milk. I use a little bit different of milk, but same kind of idea. It's creamy and wonderful that you can, um, that you can make. Let me see if I can, bring my camera or see how hot this is. This is my heaviest pan, you guys can see. So it has a really, it might not be the prettiest soup per se, but it is packed full of flavor. And we definitely love having it uh, during the winter months here. And, you know, it's really, 
really such a special special recipe for me because it reminds me of our Christmas Eves that we have, but uh, I know you guys are gonna like it. So if you're not a mushroom fan, don't be afraid, it's a good one. And that salad as well, I will just wrap this. I like to do this ahead of time because really like getting out the food processor is like the most work for this recipe. Uh, but I will mix this all together. I might add in like, and like really with the recipe, you can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be like following it per se really have fun with it. You can add in some seeds, you can add in some dried fruit if you want. If you're avoiding that, add in a chopped apple, put the dressing on that you've already made. I'll just wrap the dressing and put it in the refrigerator and this is gonna be my lunch tomorrow. So just, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, eating healthy and plant-based can be fun and creative and, and delicious and that's really uh, my takeaway from it is that you're doing so much greatness for your body and prevent prevention by eating all these foods, the cruciferous vegetables and mushrooms and beans and different things and soy that really can just taste amazing. And, and really you can get your whole family on board and not even them know it, how much good they're doing for their body. So eating things like Brussels sprouts that maybe you shaved really could be a fun way of getting those in that you might not normally do. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We have like 10 minutes left. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to leave in the chat. Again, I will type up all the recipes and make sure it's out with this recording. And if you guys also haven't missed or haven't seen any of our other classes that we've done, we've been doing this since the pandemic started virtually. And our YouTube channel has tons of our classes that we have, every single one we've ever had um, from back last spring. And so there's a lot of great information and I know that we have a lot of really exciting classes coming up in the future. So I'm really proud of all the work that Plant-Based Pittsburgh is doing. Yeah, edamame pasta is great. Uh, I know that Aldi has started to sell that. That's organic as well. Yeah, and I, I also agree that I serve my husband who eats. So. So that's, that's great. Um, I promised, I almost forgot, but I promised PCRN to, to reiterate that since we are partnering with them, the Salt Lake Thrive and Plant-Based Pittsburgh, their let's be breast cancer, Awareness Month and the four-pronged approach. So you can go on, you can still enter into and get some prizes. Who doesn't want prizes? And the book, my book, Beyond Cancer, The Powerful Effect of Plant-Based Eating, all sales for October are being donated to PCRM. Another reason to get it and share it. Any other questions for Brittany? It's, it's been a delight, as always. Oh, Judy, tell your, your husband, he doesn't want to eat grains because of the carbs. Oh, we've got to get him into good carbs. The complex carbs are so healthy. Oh, and I forgot you talking about that is that I actually, for the recipe, I had a sweet potato that I cooked earlier and that you can add to your salad too um, once it's cold. So this is another great carb that you can have uh, and add to your salad. There was a sweet potato as well. Yes, yes. And if you have my book, there's a bit, nice chart in it. I was trying to pull up, but Judy, um, oh, he wants to save room for the unhealthy carbs, okay. Sometimes, you know, I'm like that. You just can't change people and try to convince them. But if there, there is, um, if he wants, there's a chart in my, in my book about the beauty of complex versus simple car carbs. And of course, there's a lot of information out there. What is my book? My book is again, I should share it again. It's called Beyond Cancer. Can you see it? 
the powerful effect of plant-based eating, and you can get the paperback or the Kindle edition on Amazon. And you can email me if you have questions. My email is you'll be getting it tomorrow, but certainly email me with anything. And, and really my approach is a simple guide, step-by-step -step on how to go into adopting and sustaining plant-based eating. Any other questions that Brittany or I are missing? Oh, Beth, I wish we had a show on the Food Network too. Yes, I wish that was some. 